Al Williams with Hackaday here. I wanted to show you a little bit about getting started with LT Spice, and I've got it already opened up here. This is, by the way, actually running under Wine on Linux. And so you can see most of this toolbar is grayed out. That's because there's no open document. It's a little hard to tell because it's fairly subtle, but we need to open up a new document, and we can do that with either this icon or you can go to the file New Schematic. And you can see it's still gray on the inside. It's a little different shade of gray, but now we've got a bunch of different options on the toolbar that we didn't have before. And if you read the Hackaday post, you'll see that there's a couple little differences that you should be aware of from what you would think of as a quote normal unquote Windows program. Uh, if you look at the edit menu, you'll see there's no paste, for example. There's all these different items that you can place. There's a delete, a duplicate, and a move, and a drag. Um, and I'll talk about those in a second. Also, you'll notice things like undo and redo, F9 and shift F9, instead of the more conventional control Z, control Y type things. So there's a few things you got to unlearn, I guess, to start trying to use this. Let's make a really simple schematic. You can see common components like resistors, capacitors, inductors. They're all right here on the toolbar. And so let's just make a fairly simple Wheatstone bridge. And we'll take the pencil and you can wire things up with the little pencil. And you can see you can only kind of move in straight lines once you start moving. So even though I'm moving the cursor, until I move it enough to make an angle, it doesn't really change anything. So that's nice. It makes it very easy to draw fairly good looking schematics. And then I'll come up. Oh, I shouldn't have put that one in there. So let's get rid of that one. I can use the cut command. Notice now my cursor is a little scissors. And I just cut that wire. I could have cut a resistor too if I'd wanted to. And then I'll come in here. Is what I meant to do. Every circuit's going to need a ground to simulate. So let's put a ground in here. And then you say, well, we need some sort of battery or power supply. There's no icon for that specifically, but if you notice this, I guess it's an AND gate or whatever that is up there is really just component. And when you click on that, you get a list of components. Now, some of those are things you could have done directly from the toolbar, like a capacitor. You know, they're all on here, so it's not just special things. It's basically everything. And one of the things that you can pull up here is a voltage. And that's pretty much a standard spice construct. Now you'll notice when I'm placing the power here, you, you know, it wants to put another one out. So I could select something else, but if I want to get rid of that and just return to a normal cursor, I can right click. And then I could go draw more wires. Now, I could have also put down another ground symbol here and drawn to it, and all the grounds would connect together just like in a real circuit. So again, notice I'm drawing a wire here, so I'm going to right-click to get rid of that and just go back to a point cursor. And there's a couple of things you got to know. Obviously, V and R don't mean anything, so right now this circuit wouldn't be any good. If I right-click on that, voltage there it gives me the simple things that I normally want the voltage and maybe a series resistance you don't have to fill that in so let's just say this is 10 volts for example if you wanted a series resistor here you can put it there or you could have modeled it in spice or you can just pretend like it's not there which for a lot of purposes is good enough the, the idea is, is a real power source like say a battery has a certain amount of resistance in it and you can model that as accurately or as inaccurately as you desire. 
if you click on the advanced button, you'll see there's other things. We'll talk about those in future posts, but there's things to do for AC signal analysis. There's parasitic properties, which include the series resistance, parallel capacitance, uh, a lot of stuff like that. We're not going to do any of that. I'm just going to go in and do the 10 volts. And you'll see now it shows 10 there. The resistance is the same way. If I right click on a resistor, I get this box where I can type over the resistor. I could actually select resistors with different characteristics. And it will basically show you bunches of different ones with the different tolerances. Or I could just right click on that R and get a simpler box where I just put in my resistance value. And so I'll make all of these 1000, except I'm going to make a imbalance on this one, so we'll make that one uh, 1100. And you see this little component here that has an A on it, that labels a particular wire and it makes it easier to figure that out later when you're looking at results. So if you'll notice I could have made this a ground or a common or I can just label it. And so in this case I'm going to label this to be A. That could be anything right just because it says ABC and I happen to pick A that's just a coincidence. It could have been uh, voltage one or it could have been audio out or you know any whatever you need to call that node. And so now I'm placing that label I'm going to go touch that wire and I'm going to mark it as A. And if I go mark this one, now it's marked as A2, which is not really what I wanted. It, uh, it That would actually tie those together even though they're not wired together. But I'm going to go in and change that one by right-clicking on it and change it to B. So now I've got wire A and I've got wire B. And I can refer to those when I do graphs and things like that. So pretty simple arrangement there. I've got a voltage of 10 volts. I've got a little sort of Wheatstone bridge. It's not drawn like a diamond like you normally see it. It's a square. Probably a good time to talk about that too. If you'll notice up here you've got these two hands and the hands are what you use instead of copy and paste. There's a move with the open fingers that won't move wires with it and then there's a closed finger hand that will drag things with the wires. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom down a little bit. And I'm going to go to the drag. And I'm just going to select everything and move it. So you notice I moved everything all at one time, which is fine. And just for fun, I'm going to make a copy of this so we can play with it and not destroy the original. So I'm going to take the copy icon. And I'm going to select everything. And when I do that, now I've got a moving copy, but the original stays in place. And here's my open hand move. And notice that moves that resistor without moving the connections. And if I do the closed hand move, then the wires move along with it. And you can even select a number of things and move them around as well. Now you can get some pretty ugly schematics if you're not careful there so then you want to move everything back and get it nice and straight. And same way with the cut. It's sort of backwards from what you normally think of. You don't select things and cut them. You select cut. Now you've got the scissors. If you recall I deleted just that one wire before. Now I'm going to delete everything just by copying it up. So I'm using the scroll wheel by the way to do the zoom in and zoom out. So the scroll wheel on the mouse will do that. There's only one thing really left to do. I want to get rid of my scissors icon there, or mouse cursor rather. So I'm going to right click, get back to the crosshair. And I need to do some sort of simulation here. Well, there's a couple of things you can do. The simulation icon here is the little running man. Uh, there's also a simulate menu that you can get there. But when we click on this, it realizes that we've never told it what to do with the schematic. So it's going to come up and say, well, here's a bunch of different simulations we could do. We could do a transient. 
that's really useful. That's mostly like an oscilloscope. So you run for a certain amount of time and you can just probe. For a DC circuit, it's a little bit of an overkill because it's not going to change over time. It really just needs to solve the the mesh equations and, and come up with the right value. So if you'll notice, there's like a DC operating point. And then there's other things too, which are interesting. We'll talk about some other time. AC analysis, DC sweep, noise, and DC transfer. But for right now, let's do the DC operating point. And you notice that's really just a comment that says OP. That comment's a dot. And I'll show you more about that in a second. And so it came up and just essentially gave me a report and said, well, the voltage on node 1 is 10 volts. Well, that's pretty obvious because that's what we set it to. The voltage at node A is 5 volts. Uh, the no voltage at node B is 5.2381 volts. And then it gives us the currents. And so that tells you everything you really need to know about a circuit like that because it doesn't change over time. If you wanted to, there's ways when we go to use the more sophisticated analysis that you could actually make it subtract A from B for you. But here it would be easy enough to see and you can see that you have 238 millivolts difference between A and B. So that's pretty easy to do. Now if you wanted a different kind of analysis, there's a couple of things you can do. You can right click on this and get that screen back, right? And it shows you that. Or another way you could do it is you could just delete that label, right? And when you hit run again, it's going to come up and start over. Either one of those will work. Let's do a transient and tell it to stop at, say, um, oh, I don't know, 100 microseconds. And you can see there's other little items there about when do you want to start saving the data? Do you want to start external supply voltages at zero? Uh, stop if you determine it's a steady state. Well, we probably don't want to do that here because it's going to be a steady state pretty quickly. And so there's all sorts of items that you can do depending on what you want to look at. If you're looking at charging capacitors or oscillators starting up, things like that, you might need to set some of these initial conditions. For right now, uh, we shouldn't have to do any of that. So let's just do this. And now we've got this panel opens up. There's nothing on it. Well, the reason there's nothing on it is we need to go set a, a probe. And so you'll notice as I move the cursor over these wires that turns into a little voltmeter probe or a scope probe maybe. And if I move into the components, it gives me a little clamp ammeter. And so you might guess that that's going to give me voltages and currents. And so if I click here... We've got voltage A, and it shows up as 5 volts. Again, not very interesting because it doesn't change over time, but if it were changing, you'd see it just like an oscilloscope. And if I want to overlay B on that, now there's B. It's 5.24 volts. And if I wanted to say the current out of the source, there's the current. You can see the scale for it's over here, and it's, uh, I don't know, almost 9.8 milliamps. It's negative because it's coming out of the, the power supply, right? Not into it. So if I measured the current going through a resistor, it would probably be positive. So there's a few things you can do there. If you get tired of looking at all these traces, you can just, if you click on something twice, it will become the only thing up there. So I just clicked on A twice, and now I've just got VA. And I can start adding more things to it. There's a lot of other options. You can stack them on different plot panes. Uh, you, you can do many different things. If you make sure that this one's pane is active, see how the title bar is blue and this one's gray, now this one's blue, but if I make sure that's active, I actually get different menu items. And so you can change all sorts of things here that I'm not going to go through, but the one I did want to do was add trace. And so instead of clicking on the schematic, I can go up here and actually click on these various things to get them to show up but even more importantly I can go in and write an expression so in this case I want VB minus VA and so it sure enough shows VB minus VA is the blue and you can see that's you know the quarter of a volt or whatever we said it was earlier so this is a fairly simple circuit fairly simple DC analysis a couple of different things you can do with that uh, there's 
the real power to this is now I could go change this and see what the effect was and we won't cover it in this video but there's also a way to tell Spice I want you to look at this circuit if R4 were say 900 ohms, 1000 ohms, 1100 ohms and show me the results that are how they differ based on that change and that's actually a powerful design technique is to be able to look at the trends for some parameter when a value of some component is changing one way or another. Uh, a lot of other sophisticated things you can do, noise analysis and things like that, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was to draw a schematic, uh, put the component values in, set up a simple analysis, and get the answers. Now, could you have done this one on the back of an envelope uh, with a pen and paper and a calculator? Sure, of course you could. But as it gets more and more complicated, or as you want to model things to more and more fidelity, it's a little more difficult to do that. And with SPICE, it's not the same level of difficulty. A circuit twice as complicated as this isn't twice as hard to do in SPICE. And uh, that's, that's really the value of it is when you start working with larger circuits. Anyway, I hope that helps you get started with uh, LT SPICE. And we'll be having a couple of more posts on the subject and some accompanying videos. So I hope you'll join us for those, and thanks for watching.